So what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Unconventional Money Moves podcast. I got a real treat. I got Brittany, Michael Chuck with us here today. And we were talking offline a little bit. A couple of things Brittany can definitely help you all out with is building the community, getting your confidence where it needs to be. And then the third one is a secret. I'm going to let her share that with you. So happy to have Brittany on. And she created the, what were you saying online? The largest entrepreneurial group in being up in up in Canada? Yeah, we have a entrepreneurs group called the YVR Entrepreneurs Club, and it is the largest in Vancouver right now. That's awesome. And you were talking about a few things that you wanted to help our audience with, such as building communities online, helping with the confidence, and then the secret that I'm going to let you spill for everyone that's listening. So what can anyone do to start doing these things to get where you currently are, someone out there who's looking to get to that point in time? Great question. I think that the most important aspect, if you want to lead communities and lead groups of people, is getting yourself in check. I feel like so many people, they want to, so many people want to lead communities, but the most important aspect of that is leading yourself first, because you cannot lie to people. People can sense in authenticity. People can feel when you are trying to hide something, but when you have everything together and you are stepping into your power and you are being a good person, you are acting from integrity, you're working so hard, people can sense that. People are inspired by that. And people are going to take action by seeing what's possible in themselves in you. Totally. I can sense it. I can sense the insp inspiration. <laughs> Just coming right out of you now, like, what inspired you to do all of this? Like, because it yeah. it must have it must have came from somewhere, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the big thing I feel like is really knowing why you were put here. Like, I know I was put here to inspire people. I know I was put here. When you're focused on just yourself and making money and, and, and building fame for yourself, that's only going to push you so far. But when you have a why that's bigger than you, when you want to leave a legacy, when you want to change the world, that is a why that is going to keep you pushing through every single challenge and every single hurdle. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, how did you turn this passion into something that's actually profitable because that's where a lot of people get stuck like it's like you know i'm really good at this but like i don't know how to i don't know how to monetize it which money isn't the most important thing however we all need money to buy food and have a place to live and things like that yeah i mean i think the biggest thing is finding what you're truly passionate about when i was going around and trying different things. I had to try so many. I had to overturn so many rocks to figure out my passion and purpose. But I had to try things. And at the end of the day, so many people, so many fears of doing what they're really, what they're, what's on their heart, what they were, what's their true passion. And when you take away all those fears and you take away every single thing that's holding you back, you then allow yourself to step into that power and, and do amazing things in the world because when you're focused on building something so great, it's like nothing can stop you. And that's, that's really powerful. For sure. Now, like you're, you're doing mostly real estate now, right? So I do, we own 42 rental properties. I help with the rental properties, managing them, putting them online, all the marketing and advertising. And then I also have my club, YVR Entrepreneurs Club. But YVR Entrepreneur Clubs is my my main focus. Gotcha. gotcha. So the Entrepreneur Club is the main focus. The rental is just kind of like pocket money per se. Yeah. Yeah. So the rental business we've been doing for about 40 years. It's a family business. I've helped build that up. I started when I was 18 years old in the family business. That's the more stable 
income and then the YBR Entrepreneurs Club is, you know, rent comes in every single month. We know our vacancy rate is super close to zero. We're very lucky in that sense. And then the entrepreneurship is more of the, the risk taking and the grind. It's also very profitable, but it's, um, yeah, it's, you get the best of both worlds. Right. And when you were going through the motions to create this organization, like, how many different things did you have to go through to, to find that voice and to find what was actually resonating with the community you're looking to build? I mean, the biggest thing is feedback. If you want to build something great, you have to figure out what your audience wants after every single mastermind event, gala, workshop, whatever we put on, we're asking people what direction they want to go in. Because so many people create products and What their pain points are, you know what their weaknesses are, their strengths, everything. And you're able to create solutions to help them. That is how you create a business that is out there changing the world. Right. Well, I mean, like, how do you, how do you figure that out? Like for someone who's struggling, I mean, the people who work the hardest aren't making the most money and it could be a struggle for someone. Like what was it that from that feedback that allowed you to create this this brand, this community to give you and the people that are with you the position of power that they want to be in by inspiring others to, you know, live their best lives. So if you want to build something great, I feel like the biggest thing that you have to do is really do it better than anyone else. If you work so hard, and I think so much of this comes down to hard work, if you're able to do something better than anyone else, you will become profitable. As long as there's a need in the marketplace, when you learn how to master your craft and you become one of the best in the entire world, for example, I do a lot of emceeing. I love emceeing because I used to go to these events and, I, and people would invite me to events every single day. And I was like, why am I in the audience? I'm not, I'm not doing anything to impact the world in a big way by sitting in the audience. I want to be on stage. I want to be impacting people's lives on stage. I want to be inspiring people. I want to be bringing people together. I want to be positively impacting people. I'm not going to be able to do that by sitting in the audience. So I was like, how do I get on stage? And by the way, this is my little puppy. He's a rescue. So he cries when he doesn't get attention. He was starting to whine. So I had to come over here and give him a little pet. But one of the things that's so important is I wanted to be able to impact people. And I knew that I wasn't going to do that by um, not having my voice heard. And so what I did is I was, I was strategic. I was like, if I want to impact the world in a big way, I'm not going to do it by being in the audience. How do I get on these stages? So that's when I started to perfect my craft. That's when I was like, I need to be emceeing on these stages. I need to be speaking on these stages if I want to impact the world in a big way. And I just practiced. I rehearsed. I took every single job I could. I volunteered. I would take jobs. I would be emceeing for 10 hours straight emceeing speaker after speaker after speaker not saying a word I did so much for free until I got to a point where I became one of the best and now I charge thousands of dollars to be on stage pursuing my dreams and it correlates with everything that I want to do with impacting the world in a big way so not only am I making money but I'm inspiring people I'm building my brand and it comes from hard work it comes from practice it comes from knowing exactly what you want and not letting anything take you off of your goals how did how did you get your first gig to MC? I just put myself out there. I did so much. I have my VA on Eventbrite looking for different jobs. I ask all my friends, like, what can I do to help you? I'm like, do you know anyone that needs an MC? Because what I do is I use the MCing position, which I MC five events in six days last week. I use the MC jobs 
Because if I'm going to go to these events anyways, why not be on stage? I use the MC jobs and I funnel everyone into my YVR Entrepreneurs Club, which is a very profitable business as well. So it's kind of like the two complement each other. I was like, okay, hey, what do I want to do? I want to have rooms of thousands of people and be able to inspire people and bring communities together and have entrepreneurs collaborate. And so that funnels into the YVR Entrepreneurs Club. So I just got out there. I started building my brand before you called. I was updating my speakers package. I was taking screenshots of videos when I was speaking. I'm building my brand. I'm putting it out there. I'm getting on stages. I'm asking people. I am unapologetic about my goals and I don't stop at anything. That's that's definitely apparent. I could definitely sense that. But what was that first like gig? Was there like five people there, 10 people there, like paint a picture? Cause like, you know, the first thing that you do is probably, it's probably not going to be the most glamorous. However, you are on stage performing in front of an audience, which is the most important thing is getting started. Right. Yeah. I mean, the first gig that I emceed, um, it was a very small, um, it was a very small room. It was about eight people. And I was so nervous. My mouth was dry. My hands were shaky. I had no idea what I was talking about. And I just stuck at it. And if you want to get good at public speaking, you want to get good at MC, you want to get good at leading groups of people, you have to focus on yourself. You have to become the best version of yourself because when you are on stage and you are not confident in yourself or you have insecurity from years ago or you don't know who you are, oh, the audience is going to be able to feel that. But when you work on yourself, you work on being confident, you clear out all the bones in your closet, the audience is going to feel that. They're going to feel the passion. They're going to feel the confidence. And that is what is going to inspire them. And that is what is going to move them. So if you want to go out there and lead groups of people, you have to get okay with yourself. And you have to be able to Focus on becoming the best version of yourself because that is what's going to inspire people. People are not going to be inspired by what you said. People are going to be inspired by the example that you live. Yeah, for sure. I mean, could you give me like an example? Like maybe like, you know, maybe I'm doing something that you see, maybe I could improve on. Someone's listening to this. Like what's something like everyone could start doing that maybe they don't realize they aren't doing that can help them build up that confidence to get them where they want to go. I mean, the biggest thing when building confidence, it's going to come from results. You can't lie to yourself to become confident. You can't be like, I am so amazing when really you hate yourself or you hate your life or you have no results or you're living below your potential. Because when you live below your potential, you know that. You can feel that. You can't lie to yourself. You can't, like, you can't, I am your, I am statement yourself into true, authentic confidence. Where true, authentic confidence is going to come from, it's going to come from the results that you create in your life. If you are 900 pounds, you can't look in the mirror and be like, oh, I look great. I feel super in shape. It, you, you can't lie to yourself. But when you go to the gym and you get results and you are getting shredded and people are like, whoa, you look good. Like, have you been working out? You That is what's going to create that true authentic confidence is by getting the results, getting the results in life, getting the results in your business. When you want to be successful in business and you're struggling to pay rent, you can't lie to yourself. You're going to have that guilt inside. You're going to have that shame inside because you know you are living below your potential. But when you show up and you work your butt off and you start getting the results that you know you deserve, that is what's going to create true authentic confidence. It's going to be the hard work that creates the results and the results are going to give you feedback that what you're doing is amazing and you are amazing and it's going to be like a domino effect. It's going to light your life on fire and you're going to be like, okay, I feel confident in myself. Yeah, totally. I mean, how, how did you keep pushing through this? Because I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. Like everyone's going to have like a moment where they are like, man, I don't know if I need to keep doing this or not. Because uh, it takes, I mean, how, how long have you been doing this for now? I had started my business about a decade ago and it's 
it's resiliency. I've gone through so many challenges. I was on national TV painted as a villain because I was confident and you see me, I have a very strong personality. I'm very confident in myself. And unfortunately, when you put a strong alpha confident person on reality TV, you can paint them like a villain in two seconds flat. You edit what they say, you edit words that come out of their mouth to create new sentences and you can make them look so bad. You take a hundred hours of footage and you can press that down into 15 minutes and you can make the biggest saint in the world look absolutely horrible. And so I went on television, national television, and I was super confident. I was like, you got to believe in yourself. You can't care what other people think about you. And they painted me as like this person that just didn't care at all. And through that, I came off that TV show and I felt so awful. And I hit one of my biggest rock bottoms. It was that in correlation with a really traumatic experience and a really traumatic breakup. And I was, I hit my rock bottom and, but it was through that time and it's through our rock bottoms that we create compassion for other people. It's through our rock bottoms that we are able to appreciate the highs. And so it's, it's embracing the challenges and, it's that resiliency. Nothing is going to come perfect. Nothing is going to come for you amazing. You're not going to show up super talented and super amazing. And the master of your craft, you're going to have to work your butt off in order to get there. But through that, you are going to start to see results. And that is going to be so empowering. It's going to inspire you to keep going. Well, what did the rock bombing look like for you? And what what was the show? I I didn't realize you were on a, a reality show. Yeah, I was on The Bachelor. Oh, I didn't. I've been watching The Golden Bachelor lately. It's so cute. It's so I sweet. heard I heard about that. I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, it was really challenging after the show dealing with all of the the storm that had happened. Um, the other thing they do on television is they use a lot of mind manipulation to really break you down because if they can break you mentally, they can create a character out of you. So if they can break you down and they can demoralize you and they can push you to your limits and they can absolutely destroy you, they get to rebuild you into whoever the producers please. They can rebuild you into the hero. They can rebuild you into the stupid one. There's always that, you know, the one that's the bimbo. There's always the the perfect one. There's always the homecoming queen. There's always a villain. When have you ever watched reality TV and they're not been a villain? If you think for one second you're going to put 15 people in a room and at least one of them is going to be a villain, you are so mistaken. They can create a villain out of anyone. And how they do it is by breaking you down and then trying to mind manipulate you. Trying to say, oh, are you sure you really care about The Bachelor? Are you sure you really care about these girls? Or do you just care about X, Y, Z? Like they, they try and like plant seeds and really manipulate you mentally. And after going through that, I was on the show for about a month-ish. And then I just walked off the set. I had enough of it. But it really like, it really pushes you to limit as a human being. And I'm a very strong individual. So for me to go through this experience was, I couldn't even imagine what other people are going through as well. And I had to rebuild after that. I had to come off that show after being painted as somebody that I was not. And I had to stand in my truth and be like, I know who I am. I know I'm a good person. I know I just want to help people. I just want to inspire people. I went on that show trying to inspire people to be confident in themselves. And they they spun it as I was too confident. And I was like, what's going on? In society, if you want to build success, if you want to do something great with your life, you have to be confident in who you are. If you are not confident in yourself and your goals, you are never, ever going to achieve your dreams. So society tries to break us because, oh, if you're too confident, you're the villain. But then they try and break your confidence. But then if you don't have any confidence, then you're weak and you can't get to your goals and you're a loser. And it just it blows my mind that society does this when we need to be lifting people up. We need to be building people's 
we need to be building people up, not tearing them down. And in society, when confidence is villainized, how do we build people up into confident versions of themselves so they can go out there and get their dreams? It, it blows my mind. And it was absolutely devastating to see the reality of what the world state is. But we need to know that so we can equip ourselves and protect ourselves so that we can create a shield around ourselves so we can become more confident and not let bullies or people try and tear us down. The entire time you were saying that, <laughs> this song, I don't know why this song popped in my head, but Love is a Battlefield was like playing in the background. Seriously, like, so Life strong. is a Battlefield. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate you coming on, showing people how to be confident, going through the reality TV show, Blender, coming out stronger, better than ever. And happy to have you on the Unconventional Money Moves podcast, Brittany. Thank you so much for having me. And anyone that wants to connect, please reach out to me on Instagram at Brittany Michael Chuck, B R I T T A N Y M I C H A L C H U K. And for anyone that tags me on Instagram or reaches out to me on Instagram, more than happy um, to give you a complimentary 15 minute uh, session with me with anything you want to work on. So reach Perfect. out on Instagram. Yeah, hit Brittany up. She's super reachable. That's how I got her on here today. So we'll see everyone next time. Bye, everyone.